Hello and welcome to a new video about my barbecue controller. We are entering something with a bunch of buttons. Last time we realized or we, we made it that uh, we can press the buttons and we realized the buttons even if there was slight... slight... <coughs> it did not work very well at the beginning but now I think we found a solution. Now I said it would be interesting to have this button press repeated maybe or maybe not yeah so i i did recode my get button procedure and i also did uh, uh, more stuff in my analog button so there is no more the more there's not only the pin number the base value and and the, this button count and so on there's also a boolean button repeat if it's true the button will be repeated and there's a repeat pause an integer this means how often uh, you need to see the button first time, afterwards it's every time, tuk, 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 tuk. Yeah, so that you press the button, you get the button, then you get nothing, and after, I don't know, five, yeah, five times nothing, it, and you still hold the button, tuk, 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 every time, repeated button fire, all right? So this is the idea of this, that uh, you can press a button and hold it a little bit and nothing much will happen. If you set it to, to zero, then it will fire all, always. Yeah? And if you set this button repeat to false, it will only bring a trigger of the first button press. Yeah? Here, therefore, I store the last button number I've received. And I, have co of course, has to also include a repeat counter. And this repeat counter will simply, it's not called repeat counter, it's repeat, uh, look, it's just code ready, uh, just code ready, I want to try it, uh, copy this, here this I, I recoded somehow, I have a button found, it's with minus one, and I will uh, bring back this button found, oh that is wrong, if this, uh, Keep it that way. Uh, button found. And here is here's the logic. Yeah? If button found is bigger than zero, so if some button was recognized, uh, and and this button found, oh it's not it's not the repeat counter, there's a this is last button. If button found is last button, and we have this repeat on the repeat counter will be bigger than one. If the repeat counter is smaller than the repeat pause. We will set the button found to minus one because then we will have break. If we don't have a repeat count, we will send minus one. All right. And now I only have to think when to set this last button. Okay. And if no button was count was found, the button was released. I will also set this last button. Hmm. So it was not still code ready. Because I, I'm not allowed, I'm not allowed to send the last button or to save the last button if I set it by this repeat thing by two minus one. Huh? Let's try it. I have also set some standard values. So the check time is 100. I don't want to give this check time all the time. Button repeat is standard standard to true and button pause is to 5. I think these are reasonable values. I'm not sure. I will simply try this now. Uh, where is the analog button? Here I will remove this. The only thing I have to do is this. Pin number, base resistor, button resistor and number of buttons. And now it should repeat. Now it should repeat. If it really does, we will see. Let's see if it's still working if I press the buttons. Yeah, button zero pressed, button one pressed, button two pressed, button three pressed. 
five, six. All right, that's zero. Is there a pause? I think so. Hmm. Up here a little bit. Uh, let me see some. Oh, yeah, okay. Zero. It's just starting. One. Pause. Uh, one is one is pausing. Why is zero not pausing? Zero? It's just starting. One. Pause. Two. <sighs> Make some temperature change. Put it on the computer. Temperature probe. Exhaust temperature. Sure, we should see some lines pretty soon. Yes. Well, it's three. Pause and then running. Okay, this is working as expected. Four. Pause and then running. Okay. This is working nice. Maybe five is a little bit too short. But why is zero just firing? Zero. Zero. Document it, then it's a feature. <laughs> what is this? Why is this? I will start at zero. Start at zero. I calculate the expected value. Read well, smaller than limit value, button found, equals I. So I is now zero. Bigger or equal than zero. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Now it should work. All right, so this is working. Now let's see if I can influence this behavior somehow. Uh, so I will set now the check timer. Well, okay, 100, 100 is okay. Button repeat, I will set to false. Let's see if this is working. If I don't want to repeat the button, if I just want to have the first press and then hold it, that is not continuously firing. Looking good. I can press and hold the button, but I only get it once. What is happening? Button 4 pressed, <laughs> button 5 pressed, button 6 pressed, yes, this looks good now. So without repeat it also works and now let's set the repeat to true. Uh, let's find some, say 5 times, this is now exactly as before and I want to have it 150 milliseconds. Yeah. I don't, honestly, I don't want to use the analog digital converter too often because I know there are issues when using the analog digital converter with Wi Fi. And actually, I want to have the way open that this thing is also connecting to an MQTT server or MQTT, MQTT broker and publishing all the, the measured values and so on, also the MQTT. So I need Wi Fi there, all right? And this is the reason why I don't want to overload the, the ADC because this is somehow used by measuring, I don't know what, yeah, power supply of the, of the Wi-Fi channel or something like this. This is by design in this, in this uh, ESP board. So let's see how this feels now with 150 milliseconds. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Press. Now the pause is reasonable and also I think I get a pretty swift response. This is nice. 
This is nice. Light. Let's try it with 200 milliseconds. Because I think 500 milliseconds, you know, you, you feel already lagging. You feel already pretty much this lagging that um, if you press the button and this thing is not really reacting like this. Yeah, this is reacting and it does not feel, feel good. Yeah? This is based on the reaction time here. And five times two, this would be one second. This is probably already a little bit too much. Let's see. So we should see now, press the button, get the button event, one second pause, and then running, firing continuously. And this is, this is, I think this is maybe a little bit too, hmm. oh, but it's working. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. This fits me. Not too fast. <laughs> Gentle, not too fast. This fits me. All right. I think I will make this my standard. Here. So whenever I'm not giving anything, I say, okay, to every check time, every 200 milliseconds, button repeat is... Yes, that's nice. Huh? Remove those lines here because they are no longer needed, because this is now my standard. It's the first, first project, so I declare it as my own standard. Upload this, final check, and then... Then we need somehow to... What do we need? Then we need somehow a menu huh? that we can control the things we see. What things do we need to control? The resolution of the screen, X and Y resolution, a temperature set point, and the temperature set point. Those things should be controllable, I think. Oh, are you ready? All right, I think this is okay. Simple implementation, still small scale, working good. How good it really works, we will see when we really want to operate something on the menu. Like said, this is next thing I want to do. I want to have a menu that I can select the screen resolution, the screen area and stuff. Yeah. I also want to make the screen a little bit more, you know, write something on the axis that we, do, that we know where we are with the, the temperature and so on. Yeah, this I want to do next time, for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.